What's going on everyone? This is Squids. We are doing another episode of Squid Tales. I know we've had a three month hiatus here uh, with summer and everything getting so busy. I decided now that is a good time from a recommendation from somebody to bring it back. And what better time than now? Considering the fact that summer's finally over. Thank, thank, thank God. Screw, <laughs> screw everything about that. But without further ado, today I have a friend of mine that I've been friends with for a long time going to be the guest for this episode and probably more likely reoccurring. Uh, this is uh, Mitch. Um, I guess I, I could let you introduce yourself since you are here and you are a person. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Mitch as he just said. Um, not a whole lot else to say, I guess. Well, let's 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 dive, let's dive into this. So, so people, I already told them on my on the first episode, and Charles did too. And what's what are like, what are the what are your? Okay, let's go with this. What are the five animes that you would say are your favorite right now, like of all time favorites? And we'll start with that. We'll start with that. All right, I would have to say, um, and you don't have to do an order if you don't want to. I mean, if, unless you want to do an order, I just figure top five is a good place to start. Yeah, um, so far I would say I really like 86. I, I haven't read the manga or anything. I'm not a manga reader. Um, <laughs> He's just, illiterate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the dyslexia hits hard. So, I I just watched the anime. Um, I'm liking that one so far. I liked the Violet Evergarden, uh, Summertime Render. Uh, and then, for other things, I guess uh, Ray Zero and. Moshko Tensei. Okay, okay. So you can kind of give the people a gist of uh, what, what what your favorites and everything. But what what got you more or less, and like what what made you start liking anime as a as a um, medium of art, and what got you into getting into the depth that you're at now? Uh, a couple things. One of them was when you showed me Darling in the Franks way back. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those ones I'm afraid uh, to rewatch. We, we but don't we it, don't watch that one, right? Because so, once you rewatch it, it's 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 not good anymore. And the other thing is, I tend to wail really hard in mobile games, and I went a little overboard on Fate Grand Order. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks. We got a Fate loser here. Yep. That's... Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've seen pretty much all of those. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's, uh, <laughs> you hear the here, folks. He's announced it to the public. Anybody here that needs to know, we've got a fader here. And, and, and I, I remember a time when you were also very big into the sword art online. Yeah, you, you're following the conclu the the the, conc the con I can't freaking talk. You're following the train of just being a sad and alone for the rest of your life. Oh yeah, <laughs> proud to be on it. That's like that's like oh god. Next thing you know, you I know you don't, but that's like saying like fucking seven deadly sins on top of it would be your favorite. Oh no, nope. I don't think I've ever watched a full season of it you didn't watch a full season of seven deadly sins no what nah nah you at least had to watch the first two i've seen half of the first season and that's about it damn i mean i can't say you're missing a whole hell of a lot but that's just because of the studio transfer if they never transferred studios i had faith it would have stayed good but oh man it's like on the tier list of like the the grand order of terrible animes is like just because of the production staff is 2010 berserk well, promise neverland season two you got it <laughs> i oh my gosh and seven deadly sins yep man 
brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? So, like, what have you been really... I mean, I think we have a lot of common interest in this aspect. But what's what, what shows have you been watching this season that have really stuck out to you that you think that somebody would need to watch honestly maybe even like could be the mainstream ones but if there's any more underground ones that aren't exactly in the top 10 spots every freaking week you know yeah um Altier and Oriza, I've really liked that one the outro is a banger for it uh, there's not a whole lot for plot but it's something good for if you're just looking for something simple the plots are thighs <laughs> it uh, <laughs> <laughs> it carries the whole show and, then and the artists know that. Yeah. But anyways. Um, as much as I am not somebody that really likes plot armor, Liar Liar is pretty good, even though the plot armor has <laughs> been Hey, horrible. now, what are, you, what are you saying about Liar Liar? Well, it's it's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh. He can never lose. But, um, but you never know. He could. But just watching some of the games and stuff on there are kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is that one popular, or do people hate that one? Um, I haven't looked at a whole lot of reviews for it, but Revenge R is probably in one of my top ones. It's probably my top one for the season. That's your top for the season? Yeah. Wow. Like, if it would have stopped at the first season, I would have been so disappointed, and it just left in a really bad spot at the end of the first season. And then the first half of the season so far started out pretty slow, and it actually keeps the pace going pretty strong, for, like, at least it has so far. I mean, I haven't, so. I haven't heard bad things about it. I'm just surprised, that's all. Yeah, it's like, it's really sad to think about, because, like, huh, the, the ones that, like, like, I fucking love it as a series, it didn't bring anything new to the table, but the way that the series that I'm gonna say is like depicted and the animation style and just the flow of it is fucking hilarious is uh, my tiny senpai for some reason has a 6.6 .6 on my anime list not that I fucking take it as the gospel but it's a good indication of what the people are thinking and I don't understand how that has a 6.6 .6. it is absolutely the bee's knees every weekend i watch that and i go man those two are so cute <laughs> like it's so oh my god have you been watching it i have not oh dude you're missing out it sucks because they had a uh, there's some event going on in japan this weekend last weekend so they they postponed the episode another week which made me really sad but like every weekend like of course i watch michelko tensai and like all the other ones and like but freaking um i can't i can't like not not watch um my tiny senpai and not be happy because it's it's just so good like <laughs> and then like the, another one for me like i've been doing videos on this though but the dreaming boy is a realist like that's another one i think it was like a 6.5 but like it has kept me so in like intrigued the whole way through on it. That one's been really good for me too. Like it's like nothing special either, but like it's just this like Alta Ultimate Mega Chad simp turns individual, and like for once the chicks like, but she's like Aika's a fucking little soggy bitch, like she. She needs to make up her mind because, like, Kay is, she's, I, she needs to pounce on that. She's pushing it so hard, but I think he needs to pounce on that. Especially now that he found out that his little quote-unquote college crush is a fucking, uh, she's just a little bitty eighth grader. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to remember her name with uh, black hair. It's the female... MCs or the female leads best friend but it'd be kind of cool to give her a love interest in this if they did that with well before the end of the okay. season but I really like the like you said the main character's development in it yeah. and it doesn't really stick to uh, the typical twists and turns that you'd normally see 
No, and then of course there's the disciplinary council, and then his fucking little, uh, little uh, Yandere sister. It's fucking crazy bitch. And then how about for dark gathering? Oh, the dark gathering is a fucking gem. And it, the best part is like every episode, like when you find something out. I mean, it's it's in the genre itself, dark, dark mystery thriller, but like. You get a new question every time. And it's always about that ginger bitch. Like, she's like a sadistic little motherfucker. Like, you're like, is she trying to, like... What is she, is it going to go a lot darker what with is her? It? It's or? like, she the main villain? Like, like, <laughs> I mean, I know she's all... Oh, I'm kind of getting those vibes off it, too, though. So and, and it's like, oh, my gosh. I just don't even know. <laughs> oh... Yeah, and another one I started watching this season was Horimiya, but I haven't watched the last couple here. That one really... Um, I haven't even I haven't even watched that one. Okay. Uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's, it's a, it's a good... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that's how you it's feel a, about well, that. I, I like it because it's a pretty decent slice of life rom-com kind of thing, but like the couple gets together early so it's not like they're just chasing each other the whole series like you're waiting for that build up it's like oh they're already a couple and this is kind of what their life is like so I don't know it's so it's, it's kind almost of a, like a slice of life it is a slice of life yeah I thought you always gave me shit for watching slice of life I do <laughs> then why, why the fuck are you watching slice of life <laughs> oh this one's an exception for me mm mm <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> you can't just fucking go into my life and do that. Oh. My heart's not even broken. Oh. oh, dude, dude. Reign of the Seven Spellblades. I made a video about that last week. That, like, was, like, so tame. And then, like, the last episode. Actually, I think a new one dropped tonight. I, I haven't watched it yet. But by the time this is up, it'll, it'll definitely be up. But, like. He, like, the episode ends as a conclusion after this battle. And then, like, I don't know if it was, like, because the story does that or the editing was bad. But, like, it cuts instantly to this, like, scene of him with this teacher. And, like, apparently this teacher was with, like, six other teachers. And they, like, murdered his mother. And, like, now he's getting revenge on them. It's like, what the fuck? This Harry Potter shit just turned really dark and he's ahead of this fucking cult to kill these motherfuckers and he murdered his teacher that was totally supposed to be Severus Snape just murdered him just dead I'll have to pick that one back up I dropped that one a couple episodes ago I, I just kind of forgot about it but and then this has nothing to do with anything seasonal right now but oh my gosh so I'm trying to think of the name of it um I suppose you don't have on my anime list, so we can't just look. But um, White Fox just picked up a three-core anime that's coming out starting January, and they want to do all three cores in a row. So that's going to be, like, 48 episodes, right? And they're doing it from June until August, which... Yeah, go to go to White Fox. Let's let's look that shit up. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, apparently it's a really good series. Obviously, if they're just instantly picking it up to do this, but uh, once it loads, we got really high speed internet here. <laughs> no, no lies. Well, while we're waiting for this to oh, there we go. While we're waiting for this, uh, have you been keeping up on Sugar Apple? I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm on episode two. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. He says. You know, that's another one I was about ready to drop. And I think it's actually going to get pretty dark here at the end. Oh, do you? Well, so they have this uh, other elf. He's from a, uh, or a fairy, sorry. From a that's made from a precious gemstone, and um, well, he his thing instead of like swords and all that, it's like strings or wires that come through his hand with a needle, okay. and so it teased him in one episode, and 
him and Shao fought, and you didn't really see anything past that. But then the princess that was obsessed with him, or uh, the one that had stole his wing, had uh, picked up a new fairy, like kind of just to despite her father. And it turns out it's the same guy, but he's he's got a lot of dark undertones to him. Oh no! So. I'm kind of excited to see where that goes, and that's kind of the thing that's holding me on to that series. Okay. Well, I'll pick it up right towards the end, but, um... No, it's, uh, Sengoku Yoko. It's just a shonen. But White Fox picked it up for three cores, right? And that means if White Fox... It's not been officially announced yet, but we're pretty sure White Fox has ReZero. So that means either ReZero's not going to be airing until next fall or winter 2025 i should have known when what fucking you can't get anything great but you gotta wait four or five fucking years between every season of that <laughs> damn show oh, oh my gosh man man i was really expecting sometime like early 2024 or something for it but and they announced this last week i really doubt if white fox has it they're gonna try juggling that type of three core on top of ReZero which is going to be another 25 episode two core season that's the thing for me that gets scary when they start getting into anime that that's that long between uh, seasons because you never know when the studio is going to end up dropping the ball because so much can change in that kind of time frame Oh, White Fox like what you're period saying. I mean White Fox half their staff with a studio bind for Mashoko Tensai during COVID yeah and it's like you were saying too with like seven deadly sins and whatnot like i'm really hoping ray zero doesn't end up going down that route i don't think it will because that's why fox's money goat <laughs> like on it between merchandise and i mean katakawa does the late novel and manga sales but still they it's like even after season two aired it was still in like the top five um physical media sales of any series like, it's just ludicrous. So, like, I don't think they'll drop the ball on that. Um, I don't, oh, that that uh, that also starts in uh, October is uh, Goblin Slayer Season 2 Ooh. since White Fox dropped that. Now, I'm trying to think of what studio has that one now, but I know it's in good hands. And no, it's not MAPPA, so don't, don't go getting all excited now. <laughs> it, but it looks really good, and I'm really excited for that because... You don't have to think when you watch Goblin Slayer. You just, you just watch this big guy. He's not even that big, but you just watch him just killing goblins. <laughs> There's nothing to it <laughs> except for his big titted farm girl that he needs to hook up with. Okay, but like, he just won't do it. He's been he's, he's just dropping hints left and right. This guy's just not picking up on any of them. But it pisses me off. You know what I mean? Like, if somebody had that just sitting right in front of them, a nice healthy relationship. She makes some breakfast. She goes with them everywhere. She's just like, and then he just whatever, goblins. Like you. <laughs> This is a sad, pathetic man. I I think every weeb in the world can testify when they say he's despicable. But we still love him. And Lizard Man with his cheese. He got no words on Goblin Slayer? Or is this just me going off? Oh, no, I was just reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the thinking first, about that face reveal. I remember the first time I well, we didn't even get a face reveal. What? I thought we did at the end when he no, took out the it's helmet. just his hair. I'm gonna have to rewatch that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just his hair, man. We didn't get no face. Oh. He's got gray hair. So you know he's a big deal. I watched if is it wrong and try to pick up girls in a dungeon. Oof. The first two seasons. The first two seasons weren't as bad, 
And then and uh, all I can think about is my ex-girlfriend and how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh. keep going. No, but when there is that uh, in the dungeon, they took the like the last part I remember. I don't remember what season it was. They there was a monster girl in you the dungeon. Tell me what season it is. <laughs> I think three. Well, I ain't gonna know that then. Well, anyways, well, I'm, <laughs> I lost track because one of their seasons I bet was, they're in a dungeon. Actually, I think one of the whole seasons they were, I don't, I think they were hardly in the dungeon. I felt like the whole season was filler. It was so bad. I tried not to space the whole thing out and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to push through it. There's got to be at least some sort of good ending or something to it. And it, it left you pretty much nowhere. It was a whole season of filler. And then there was a little action in the season after that. And then they, there was this monster girl in the dungeon that had gained like almost like human sent, sentience, if that's the word. And they picked her up and kind of taught her the ways of the human world. And then you find out that the king is orchestrating all this stuff with the uh, dungeon and keeping it going. And that it's basically like a big breeding ground, whatever. But, with humans and demis? Yeah, and then oh. people end up trying to uh, poach her or whatever. And, uh, this girl they found in the dungeon? The, the girl they found in the dungeon. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so he's, he's picking up girls in dungeons. It's hard to believe, man. You never <laughs> guess it from the title. But, yeah. Damn. I am shocked. Yeah, and then... Pretty much he, I think he started pretty much conquering the dungeon or getting the dungeon bat from the poachers, and that's the last I saw of it. But they're still making more, so it's got to be going somewhere, probably. Unless it's all just filler again. I mean, Black Clover exists. That is one I haven't watched. I watched, okay, so. I watched the first three episodes of it. And that was it. <laughs> that sounds about right. There's a handful of anime that I just will not touch, like Bleach or One Piece or anything that's got too much hype, and I think Black Clover kind of falls into that category for me. Yeah. So. But you know what I really enjoyed? Hmm. Fairy Tale. And you know what? It deserves all the hate it gets, but let me tell you. Some of those characters are their characters, <coughs> and fucking you can't you can't deny that one. Those, but but other than that, no, that show is literally. If like, I drew a square. I know this is audio only this episode, but just picture this with me, everybody. He's I'm, making a square with his fingers. I'm making a square with my fingers. Now you're filling it in. Eight. 90% of that square is full of plot armor. And the other 10% is, is like a Toriyama special of like power level continuity not matching. But it's a great series. And we got the 100 year quest coming up here. Pretty exciting. Yeah, kudos to you, though, for actually sticking through with that. I watched... Okay, everybody. What was the time frame you finished that in again? You did it pretty quick. Well, here's the thing. I, I didn't, realistically. I started it, like... I think I was, like, living with Jewett. So I think that was, like, you know, like, five, six years ago. And I watched, like, the first 112 episodes in like a month and then like I picked it up again in like a year and watched like 50 more so I got to like 160 and then like <laughs> just last year I watched like 160 to 320 or whatever the ending is so like you know like almost like 180 episodes or whatever in like a month I don't even think it was a month dude you, you chowed those <laughs> down pretty good well, I... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not dissing you. I'm like, 
That's commitment. That's pretty. That's pretty sick. I I think my record. I think I saw my record watching that actually. Uh, ironically, of how many episodes I've watched in a day, and I think I counted thirty six, and that's with um, marathon mode where you skip the intro and the outro. I think I watched thirty six episodes that day. Oof. Yeah. And that that was with potty breaks, smoke breaks, lunch break. Well, you've asked me now, but what do you think your top one of the season is? My top one of the season? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, are we talking like my personal or what I think deserves to be top one? Well, wouldn't that kind of go hand in hand? No. Because not not saying the one that you think is going to be the top, but the one that that I personally think. yeah the one that you personally want to be on top. Oh, that's so easy. It's Michelle Kotensai. I even though I know Core Two is going to be where the main main fucking action is, but it, this part of the school arc with freaking you know Shelfie. And Rudis literally doing mirror interactions of their first interactions is is great. And then Zenova fucking Shisha. He's so great. Yeah. I'm just excited. The king of figures. Dude, and then if you like what well, yeah, dude. Fucking that figure. <laughs> but then like if you pay Thank attention you. to the intro or is it the outro? It's a lamp. And it has a green, a red, and a blue feather for all his wives. Really clever on their part. And at the end, the green feather flies away because obviously this is Shelfie's arc. Before he goes, and we're not, no, we're not going, no, we've already spoiled a lot of things tonight. But you should know that going into my podcast. But Roxy's decks. We can we can wait a while on Aries. That's fine with me. Yeah, I I am surprised though. Well, I does does he realize that it's Shelfie yet? Because that scene on the bridge is kind of, was kind of like where he's like, I think he almost like he was thinking scared. about it. Well, he thought. Oh, <laughs> I don't I don't know where we're going with that, but he thought he was gay. He thinks he's gay. This is the gay well, the gay th- Rudis arc. Okay, okay. Well. He actually questioned it. Right. I just wasn't sure if he's like in his head having like flashbacks to Shelfie no. or if it no, was. He's just okay. Falling in love for a fits. Oh, good for him. <laughs> Until he goes to reach in the pants and there's no dick there. Wow. <laughs> no, but he's figuring it out slowly. Not really, but just like when he asked to meet her master, that's really hard to do. Now, here's an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. I obviously haven't read the light novel. Like I've said, I don't read. Like, I don't even read traffic signs. He's illiterate. Yeah. Um, anyways, for as somebody that hasn't read the novel, like light novel or manga or whatever. Light novel. Yeah. I had this debate with somebody in my comments the other day. That I think that he's going to realize... Shelfie is Shelfie by a repeat of the shower scene. Like, he's going to end up walking in on her on the shower, like, almost in that kind of cliche or something. Is that what you think? Well, it makes sense because they're, like, replaying a lot of the stuff. You Well, like, the scenarios, in a it's sense. Like, are you saying it's like George Lucas? It's like a clock? <laughs> Did you never hear George Lucas explain Star Wars back in the day? No. Yeah, dude. Star Wars is like a clock. So uh, episode one is going to mirror episode 11. And episode three is going to mirror episode nine. And yeah. Oh, I, I guess I've never heard that. Oh, dude. He had a whole fucking video on it. It was terrible. But no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm just excited for. I mean, the whole series. We get. We got Orsted to look forward to. We got freaking uh, poor Zenith to look forward to. There's just so much coming up ahead. And uh, that that's like when you were telling me, well, 
when you were telling me telling me where Zenith was, and I'm like, oh dang, and then like an episode or two later, it said uh, that she was safe and all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be pretty intense in the next few episodes, or not later down the road, but um, yeah, it, it got it's pretty much the point where in the end he technically made the wrong choice but then the fact that the god was in on it too and it's like all right but you'll find out more about that when that comes on because there's a lot going on in that situation but it's so good like i think we'll probably get about four to five seasons out of this series before it's completed with a couple more ovas because that's the pace they're doing it. It's. It, I'm just really excited that they'll finish it, and I wonder if they'll do the spinoff, because the spinoff. Um, I'm trying to think, I want to say it's from his kid's perspective. I'm trying to think, but it's from a different perspective because, well, I won't spoil that much. But it's it, it's it's just really cool to see in this part where Rudis is growing up out of his depression and aging because obviously this is like a two or three year gap since you know uh, he left um, the clan and like you know he's he's met like a Paul figure with Solrat and freaking he's got like obviously Hasara uh, and you know Eris and and just all these like things that he like le- is learning from and like at the same time <laughs> fucking up on <laughs> but he's learning and growing from it and then like he still makes all these mistakes and he's not perfect and that's I think that's a, a characteristic that's really not around in a lot of other series just same with like Zero season two, even though it, it was just an illusion. But when he that that two three episodes where he gets sucked in Satella's um, quest with the games w- with his with his mom and dad or not the games, yeah. Yeah, those that, episodes were ooh, that tore me so up. good. That tore me up. I think I cried like honestly the last few episodes like every episode at least a couple times oh like, dude yeah the trials when he uh relives those moments with his mom and dad yep those are so good and the be- the worst part is it, i've read the light novels up to date so far 32 or 33 i'm trying to think i think it was 32 the last i read i think it might be one behind now but like seasons one and two covered volumes one through 14 so this is probably going to cover 15 through 21 or 22. And that's going to be crazy because that's the, in a perspective. What we watch so far is pretty much like the intro to this series. You, you Season one is all about setting up the political world and the visionaries and the history and lore. And then the second season's like, oh, shit. Now we have a bunch of crap that we need to fix. But then we're going to have to go through this, you know, a, this whole thing of trials and freaking all of that to find out that, you know, Roswell doesn't love love Ram or Ram and and that, you know, Ram's still a fucking human cocoon for another probably season and a half. And then, <laughs> like... But in the end, what did we really learn besides the fact that our beautiful one and only Becky is with Subaru now and that <laughs> and that Amelia actually loves that loser for some reason? Like what an, what an idiot. <laughs> like, you know, you know how you should have known that Subaru was stupid? Oh, uh-huh. because he didn't go for Rem. And you know what would have happened if you went for Rem? That is a good point. She wouldn't be dead. She, no, she's not dead. Her consciousness is just destroyed and she'll never be the same person ever again. But that's not the point right now. The you, point, really, you really don't hold back in the spoilers on your channel. Um, usually I do on my reviews. <laughs> um, 
so but this is my podcast (laughs) this is the wild west i I understand a little now yeah you can't go wrong just the way i see it is a podcast is just two or three or however many people having a smoke I know if you don't smoke, that's cool too. But having a smoke, you know, having conversation about a topic, or yeah, even a topic, but with this specific channel, it's great. People, people love this. I mean, they clicked on this video. They seen the thumbnail for this video. Oh yeah, and they still clicked on it. Oh, well, let's got. If he doesn't mind, I, I'm, I'll cut this out if he doesn't. But that's him, the one on the only. left hand side of that photo, and the, the Metro Jesus standing there against the tree <laughs> slash seventies uh, adult star, like just glancing off in the side. He, you know, I took that photo myself. I said, "Let me make you look sexy," and I did. And then. If this, this whole, we're just gonna break this down because we're gonna have a little mid mid rant during <laughs> during this podcast. So if everybody came here looking for the answer to this photo, you're kind of gonna get it. So the man, the old Japanese German man, I can't think of his name right now, but he did the yodeling chicken video. And he also did the chicken attack videos many years later, but he did the <laughs> song with a bunch of chickens. How did it go? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and he makes this pecky face, right? When he does does the <laughs> and that's the last time I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but but. Anyways, you got Shaywan yeah. from La Seraphim and iZone in there, so there was some K-pop in there. And when 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 she was in iZone, they did a, a orange caramel cover of, of Catalina that's huge and everybody knows it now. But like, he swears to God that she made this face that was very 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 similar to him, and that he is actually this Japanese man that lives in Germany is this little Korean girl's dad. And then she took this genetics now, and then you wrap it all into one photo and you've just received lore. Like Animorphs. Yeah, there's depth Like and where it's layers. like the pictures, like on the books, like where it starts out as one thing and it slowly turns into the other. And that's just kind of what I was seeing, like her transforming into him and he rewound it. He swears there's no spot like that. And I watched it and I didn't see a spot like that, but I really wanted to. So, I mean, <laughs> you were obviously in the right. Like, that's kind of why I don't rewatch your anime. It's, I feel like it's uh, not but, as good the second time where you don't see stuff. But, but then that stuff's not that good to you then. Well, for me, it's like if I can see what's like knowing what's going to happen kills rewatching for me but there's a few like there's a few like Machia that I could really uh, rewatch and rewatch something with a lot of emotion but other genres like adventure or other long ones that don't like have a constant like deep emotional thing going I can't really watch rewatch as much yeah we know we know You've got you've got that short attention span. Oh yeah. But damn, uh, in my opinion, what I do is if I personally watch it the second time and I don't have a a new perspective, b uh, more or equal enjoyment, and c want to watch it again at some point. It's not a great series. For you, what was your favorite rewatch or what held up the best to you the second time? Jeez, that's a good question. Um, 
I feel like one that actually and this one's really confusing and I made a video about the, the sequel film but like I rewatched recently the series because the movie came out but it was a Rebel Star oh my god that show is such a freaking trip like it's like almost like this like I wouldn't I don't want to say guild but it's like this like dark ass dance action guild Illuminati shit and then there's this talking giraffe <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> dude, dude if you haven't seen it dude it's, it's some scary shit and then but no dude it's then, then, like i gave the i think at the first time i watched the first season i gave it like a like a 7.5 and then i went and rewatched it before the, when the movie came out and i bought it and I gave it like an 8.5 and then like the movie was like a 9 the movie was better than the se the whole season the first one but it it got better my second watch through and then the movie just was a it topped the cake or another one that like I really enjoy this one's really cliche but it's almost not because a lot of the kids now haven't even watched the original that sounds so hipster gatekeepery but they haven't watched the original with the original soundtrack. But um, every year I watch, rewatch Neon Genesis Evangelion, and I pick up so much every time. And then, like when you're in different points of your life, you can relate to Shinji in different arcs of the series, and like it's just really cool to see that process in your life and which depressed part of Shinji do you relate to the most you know so there's there's that <laughs> plus we got mommy there too so perfect roomie yeah it's perfect roomie drinking beer in your towel <sighs> anyways <laughs> Another one I thought was pretty good was uh, My Happy Marriage. Yeah. Chisato. Why Chisato? No. <laughs> You're still on that train. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, My Happy Marriage. Um, that was the one where it's his sister and and his, his fake sister, right? Which one was that? So that's the one. No, my happy marriage. I I I know what you're talking about now. It's airing right now. She's got the yeah, voice actress yeah. from the one. Uh, what was it under? I picked up a high school girl under a telephone pole. Is something like that. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's one of the ones where they rechanged the title about a month or two into airing the series. It was. It came out about a year ago, I think. I don't know. But um, I'm actually waiting. Watch like the first two episodes and I'm waiting. That's probably the smart move. Because this from what I'm seeing from stills is it looks like I'd just be really pissed off every week. <laughs> so I wanna just get it all done. But you know what the worst part is? I guarantee it's gonna get a second core or something. So then I'm gonna have to fucking wait anyways. <laughs> but that's what I've been planning on with that one, is I want that one to be a one time watch through. So Yeah. That's my plan. That's probably the smart way to go with that one. Cause I don't want I don't wanna I don't wanna feel that heartbreak. I mean, it hasn't been the most emotional anime so far though. Without spoiling anything for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> go for it. Well, I won't spoil it for you. I'm killing it for everybody else. You might as well just do it for me too. Oh, okay. So, it's not quite as emotional as I thought it would be, but, and there's a lot of times where you're like watching it and it feels like, why am I watching this? It seems so slow. And then a little bit, a little, it's like a little more like the overlaying anime plot comes in and it's definitely like, 
It's one of those ones where it feels based off the main plot. The whole story is barely getting started. Um, yeah, it, at least it gives me that kind of feel. So I could definitely see the second core coming in on that. So is it is it is it episode seven this week? Um, or six? it's one behind all the rest. So I think I just watched six. Um, yeah, so it's got to be seven coming. Like I said, I'll wait till that's done, but I'm definitely still interested in it. That's definitely a thing. Yeah, like, it definitely did, like, like I was saying, it doesn't, it didn't hit me as deeply as, like, Summertime Render, which is when I would have Oh, that's watched. a masterpiece. Yeah, that's one that I shouldn't have waited for between every week, because it was like, yeah. man, that anticipation was killing me. I'm still waiting for that on Blu-ray. I think it's coming out soon on Blu-ray, hopefully. It's like ReZero Season 2. That's coming out next month on Blu-ray. I have to order that, the box set. But no, some, Summertime Rendering is a fantastic series. I got all of the manga. I read the manga. It was fucking great. The series is great. Disney Plus can screw the pooch for not allowing every other country to have it for another seven, eight months after it was out. Terrible. <laughs> hate them. Hate them. I hate them. I guess I could add this one to my list of favorites as well was Hell's Paradise. We don't see eye to eye on that one there. <laughs> For you, what what didn't you like about it? Because I thought it was the it was pacing was really good. Lower than a fucking tortoise. Really? And repetitive. How is it uh, repetitive? Dude, I watched the same four characters try to at attain the exact same task for six fucking episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me that's not fucking slow. Uh, Took this motherfucker half a season to climb out of a goddamn hole. This other motherfucker don't even know if his wife's real. He's fucking... <laughs> and then the other girl's having like a mental moral crisis the whole season. And the other one's just being a slut. Like, wow. Okay. What's, what's cool? That guy chopped his hand off. That's pretty fucking neat. But like... Other than that, I didn't find any value in that season. But I'm alone, so... Oh, so I, I have a weird hunch that you've got the same feeling about Tower of God. No, that one was actually better. <laughs> oh. they, were, they weren't doing the same thing the whole season. Right. Well, they were still climbing the tower the whole season, if you look at it from the perspective you gave me the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen here, ma'am. They succeeded in tasks throughout this whole thing. These, these motherfuckers, it, it, <laughs> it didn't even do anything. <coughs> they didn't do anything. <sighs> and they still didn't do anything. They're back to square one again. So what? Now they know how to beat the gods. But they ain't got shit. Everybody's dead. What's wrong with that? Four Eyes is dead. Simp Boy himself died. All you got left is Slimy Grimy. Little Miss Ponyta. Um, little Pinky. And Mr. Confused Boy. That's it. Oh, is Blindy still? No, he killed himself. Blindy's dead. This whole time I thought you were talking about Hell's Paradise and I was trying to think of what I am. Do. Oh. <laughs> Come on, keep up, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, when he said Ponyta, I was like... Pony, pony, tail. Oh, okay. Look a mother effer. I'm sorry. Was my description not good enough for you? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> So, 
so brutal. Oh my gosh. So I sent, I sent, uh, it says, you guys probably don't care about this, but I sent the, uh, the, uh, cover photo, the thumbnail for this video to one of my buddies. And she said, now that's sexuality. So I think it's, that's going to sell. This video is going to like get really big, but it's going to have so much profanity that YouTube's not going to monetize it. But this will kickstart our career in the podcasting. And when I'm making $20 a month and I have to split it with you, it'll be a good time. <laughs> I'll take that $10 and I'll buy a manga. It's a cycle. It'll go right back into the channel. No, but that is one thing I am impressed about, though. Like, when I've gone to Barnes & Noble with you in the past, you'll buy whatever, and you'll bring it to the counter, and the weird magnetism, whoever the cashier is, the it's usually a, cute, a cutie, and just, like, his confidence is he goes up and just throws whatever on the counter, and then, like, they their faces are like, oh, and they just, like, open right up to him, and I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> Last time I bought Hitman and Succubus. That's a really good manga if you have not read that. It's exactly pretty much what you think it is. And it's beautiful. But no, I bought that and, and Summertime Rendering. And yeah, that lady sold me on a premium being Barnes & Noble membership. But... Easiest sale she ever had. Oh, screw you, man. <laughs> I think... Was that the night we went and seen Suzume? It was, yes. Yeah, yep. yeah. I remember that now. But, uh... And then I ordered recently... I think I'm gonna go to Barnes & Noble pretty soon again here. But I ordered a, a Soap & Sweat. Volume 1 and 2. Have yet to read them. But I will. Maybe this weekend. I'm very excited about this. I, like, it's this guy that makes soap, right? And this girl that he works with at the office. Because the soap's his side job. <laughs> because he... <laughs> well, it is. And this, this female that he works with has this, like, body odor that he really likes. What? The... <laughs> like, that's it. It's a romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that. Really excited for it. I might suddenly learn how to read if it gets a good <laughs> review. So. Yeah, and then like another one that I'm really looking forward to. I'm trying to get the name of it specifically, but it's um smoking behind the shop with you yep yeah that manga comes out on my birthday it's like it's meant to be i'm really excited for that one that one's gonna be i'm gonna read that every release day straight on the clock like clockwork and did that one get announced for an adaptation as well or no no I mean, the first volume hasn't even came out yet. Right. <laughs> you gotta have source material. You can't, one manga would last you two episodes. <laughs> you gotta think about this logistically. Yeah. But when it does get picked up, I guarantee it's gonna be... Uh, it'll be somebody like... I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say, um, oh, I can think of running to my tongue. Um, silver. I can't think of it, but I know it in my head, but it's, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I give up on that thought. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that was too, it's too much. 
Oh, you know what is really impressive this season, though? What? Kenshin. Oh, yep. I know there's a lot of controversy around that one, but... <laughs> separate the art from the artist. And it's a very faithful adaptation to the manga, and, like, it, it looks crisp. It's, like, honestly some of the most solid animation of this whole season. <laughs> like, and there even hasn't been any serious fights yet, really, until, I think, like, today's episode. I haven't watched today's yet. I haven't but. either. But I can guarantee you there's going to be some serious fighting. After last week, yeah, when she they're like, Oh, I love you, I love you. Ha, bitch, <laughs> take your woman, go get a real sword, fight me. That was, I think, that was two weeks ago. Because last week was the one with uh, he makes the people freeze, he's got some sort of almost like a supernatural ability. Um. Basically, he yeah yeah the guy that he yeah. freezes um or he strikes fear into people or like yeah. fills them up with energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was last week's. Yep. So that was Same the episode, episode after. No, because at the end of the episode, he takes her, so Kenshin goes to chase him. I was thinking of the bridge one, I, or I was thinking she got saved at the bridge. Like no, when, he takes her on the raft and she shoots down with him. Yep. Yep. That takes place after the moment you were talking about. In the mansion where he puts fear in everybody. Trying to remember the... <laughs> <laughs> Please, don't worry everybody, he's not having a stroke. His brain processing power has just... For some reason, I was thinking it was the... Down. I was thinking you were talking about the river arc at first, and that was two weeks ago, and then... Oh, we're back at the river again, baby. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> See, folks, this is why he doesn't read. He can't even remember an episode. It's a miracle he can wake up in the morning. <laughs> But we won't we won't diss on his existence that much. That's just that's just plain rude. <laughs> is there any uh, before we kind of wrap this up here? Is there any like seasons you're really looking forward to coming out in the future? Um, Tower of God, obviously. Yep. I haven't looked at what's to be announced yet this fall. Oh, you haven't? No, or, or winter. Or any so. future projects. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's fair. I just see if there's anything you really look forward to, but apparently, I guess if you haven't really looked, you haven't really looked. But we've got plenty of other episodes to talk about that. I just figured I'd see right now if there was anything, because I know, God, there's quite a bit, but it's so hard to think of on the spot, too. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, I know the new Girls and Panzer film comes out. I think the new Princess, Princess Principal movie came out. I kind of like that concept of how they're doing a uh, final, like, instead of doing a season, they're doing a six part film finale for both those series. I mean, it's nice, but it's kind of shitty because you gotta wait, you know, like a year between. But, like,. The animation quality is so much better. I like that. And they get more time to write it, you know? But that's just my opinion on that matter. That's not my hot take for the day. My hot take for the day is something that everybody already knows. I already gave a hot take on G. Gokuraku. So, I mean, they do the same thing for seven episodes. Anyways, maybe I just... You can see <laughs> it's the it's the fucking shonen version of a slice of life. 
We did the same thing for seven episodes. That's the funny thing too, because that's the whole reason I hate Slice of Life. It's the same thing like every episode all the time. And it's like, just drives me up a wall. And you're like, that's why I, I don't like Tower of God. Or, I mean, not Tower of God, Hell's Paradise. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, but there's so much like other stuff going on with it too. And like, for me, it's like, Oh, the symbolism from this culture and looking at the art and different things like that. I'm, I don't know. I enjoyed it. That's okay. You're allowed to enjoy things. You're allowed. You're allowed to enjoy things. But uh, nah, that's enough for me, dog. I mean, I know there's, there's tons of series I like that you don't like, but. And I do think for me, the the one rewatch I would have is Monogatari. Mm-hmm. I can rewatch that any time. That never, never gets old. Just like, I think... <laughs> I usually get really sad to do it, but I'll watch, I'll watch Berserk once a year, too. The 97 one. <laughs> Just want to get into a nice dark place and get inside the mind of guts for a while. That is, they're few and in between, but those action scenes in that series are phenomenal. And it's so sad that the sequel was animated so bad. And I have a really hard time like handling '90s art anime or like the art style of it, and. I know you like a lot more that style, but oh, I love Berserk really OVAs. kept my attention too. Yeah. Oh, 90s and 80s OVAs were so gruesome. They didn't have any rules. It was like the Wild West. Just your little brains blowing up, tits everywhere. Plots from here to Timbuktu. Man, it was a time. Like, I, I wanted to start, like, I'll probably come up with different topics. This is kind of just a gist for everybody too. Like, I kind of like once we get a little bit more rolling, want to do actual like topic weeks and like whoever the guest is do homework to like watch a bunch of that shit over that week as much as they can. And like, I think that'd be really fun. Like 90s week, 90s OVA week. Or just like, I think it'd be cool. And if anybody has any recommendations, leave them down below in the comments because <laughs> I'll take I'll take any, really, realistically. There's not much I won't do except for maybe like well, actually I don't give a crap, I'll review hentai. <laughs> Just can't get too gruesome so YouTube won't take it off. But that's you know, you could still review it. I don't think Alex nor Mitch would care at all. So there's that. <laughs> I'd be down. <laughs> I'd be down. <laughs> no denial, instant as instant gratification. I love it. But anywho, I suppose we've hit about an hour mark, and this was just kind of a nice warming up to Mitchell. I mean, he tried his best. He's he's a little camera shy. We're gonna we're not even on camera. That's the worst part. We're gonna work on that. But yeah, this has uh, been episode two, and uh, I like to thank Mitch. Like I said, he will be back definitely as a regular guest. The only other person I really have lined up is Alex, and you'll meet him next week. But yeah, Mitch, yeah. anything you gotta say? Well, thanks for having me. Oh, well, of course. You've been a friend for a long time, and you're definitely an interesting person, so it doesn't make for dull conversations. So the people need to know. Who the man on 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 the on the uh, thumbnail is? So now they know, they know the voice, they know the tree, they know your face, they know it all, and they know the like fake grand order. And my and, love for and the chicken hell's man. Paradise. <laughs> and my love for the chicken man. His love for the chicken man. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching this. If you enjoyed, please leave a like if you made it this far. I don't know <laughs> why you wouldn't uh, like the video because that'd be really, really long time to watch if you disliked it. But 
thanks for sticking around and if you're feeling generous hit that subscribe button it means a lot to me and the channel we've been growing quite a bit lately and it it i love it it means so much um yeah like i said if you got any suggestions leave them down in the comments and uh that's about it so uh until next week's video we'll uh talk to you later peace see ya